I believe we are recording. This is my wife's camera, so I'm not entirely certain. Howdy. We're recording an interview um, because we're running for office, both of us. Texas. I'm running for state senate. He's running for governor of Texas. Hi. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm interviewing him. Sure. Are you I'll running in, for I'll, something? I'll interview you next. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi. Let me let me put this over here where I can sit. Oh yeah, that's good. Why didn't I think of that before? Hi, my name is Thor Harris. I'm here with Iran Rock. I'm running for governor of Texas. Let's fuck this. I love that slogan. That's a beautiful slogan, of course. Thanks. I also am running for Texas State Senate. Uh, however, this is a money game, it seems. I'm, I'm sorry to have to announce that the, the, the Democratic Party told me that I was going to have to have $30,000 to start with. Right? Just to start with. Now, I know in the United Kingdom that they have a limit. There's a legal limit that you can only spend 30,000 pounds on your campaign and you have to stop. You can't spend more than that. But you need $30,000 in this country to start with. Pay to and, play politics, America. And wonder why everything's so fucked up. Yes. And now that the Johnson Amendment has been repealed, that means that our mega churches, of which we have 90, in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, they have all become super PACs. Wow. So my opponents in the Republican Party in my district have already raised over a half a million dollars. From the evangelical, white, Anglo-Saxon patriarchy, which has been running our country, and certainly Texas, since their inception. This is a problem, y'all. There's also, on the federal level, there's a thing called Citizens United. They have, what, jokers, right? What that means is that these billionaires, like the Koch brothers, spelled K-O-C-H, can, um, can basically buy the politicians that they want. Citizens United it needs to be overthrown. It was a Supreme Court decision when Scalia was on the Supreme Court. Unfortunately, now we have Gorsuch. So. Yeah. But these problems are not that hard to solve. We just need different personnel in these offices. And it is possible to overthrow. It's possible and in fact with the awareness that's growing right now in America, it's it's even probable to overthrow the powers that be right now. If I had run in the previous election, there would have been, as the last uh, three elections have shown, there would have been no Democratic opponent. Because there hasn't been. In the last three elections in my in my district, there's been the Republican running unopposed, or maybe there would be a Libertarian, which is what Republican light, yeah, you know, and a Republican that likes to get high, exactly, right? A Republican that likes marijuana, uh, and and that would be pretty much it. But you, you don't have a choice out here. But this last election. It's a funny thing, you know, after they elected Trump, it's like all those Democrats that used to tell us, oh, if you don't vote, you know, or they would say, don't vote, it's a broken system. Yeah. What is that noise? Don't do that, people. Don't avoid, don't just blow off voting because you think it's pointless, because this is where this gets us. Yeah, if Donald voting, Trump is where this gets us. If voting was pointless, if your vote didn't count, then why would they go to, to such trouble to gerrymander everything yeah. and to put in so many voter restrictions and to try every trick they can possibly can come up with to limit certain people's influence and brown to, people especially especially yes which is super wrong and the absolute opposite of democracy wouldn't you say Greg Abbott I mean, voter suppression is so heinous. Why don't you tell, because you know there's a lot of people on, that will be listening to this that, that aren't familiar with Texas politics, as you're running for Texas governor. By the way, we didn't get a proper inter introduction for you. Uh, my, my audience obviously knows who I am. Who are you? My name is Thor Harris. I'm a native Texan. I grew up in LaPorte, Texas. And, um, 
I don't actually want to be governor, but I don't want the guy who is governor to be governor in, anymore. And I could hardly, in good conscience, coerce someone else to do that job. You know, I actually would love it if Julian Castro would um, run, or someone browner than me, because we need brown people to vote. And if, they're in, if they're this much of the population, they should be represented in the government. They should be represented in the government. You know, here's a heartening thing, Aron. The other day in uh, Austin, Texas, I went to a Beto O'Rourke rally. Mm -hmm. And it was very crowded. Uh, it was on UT campus, and it was. It looked more like the population of Texas than the Texas legislature looks. It was at least half um, brown people. Did you ever spend much time in the Texas state capitol? I have spent a, a tragic amount of time there. Do you, do you, are you dismayed with the way that business is conducted in our government? It's appalling. Yeah. yeah. We, we People stand in line. I mean, people, passionate people who care about their community stand in line and testify against ridiculous bills like the bathroom bill, like SB4. Like, these, just these atrocities that are being put forth by these Texas legislators because their money comes from evangelical billionaires and that's what they want when they give that kind of money. They want things like the bathroom bill. I interviewed last month uh, someone who I thought should have been governor now. I interviewed Wendy Davis. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very frustrated with... Uh, we love you, Wendy. With the record low voter turnout that we had, uh, we ended up with somebody who's insidious. I mean, we, we ended up with Dan Patrick as a lieutenant governor, and I've been complaining about him on on you know, on stage behind the podium since at least 2012. I mean, it's it, yeah. and I've been complaining about Roy Moore in Alabama. I've been complaining about him since 2007. How are these people continuing to get elected? What is wrong with our country that we keep putting the worst people imaginable in power? Yeah, I, I mean, since I was a kid, most politicians have been the worst people imaginable. No offense to those of you who think I'm not talking about you. But there's a lot of background noise you're going to project like hell. <laughs> okay. Um, we can do better, Texas. Uh, our foster care system is cruel. It's it's uh, kids are leaving our foster care system more broken than when they arrive. We have this maternal mortality rate that's that of a third world country. And that's They're, no joke. And this is the Go reason ahead. that happened was because the evangelicals, the pro life movement shut down about a quarter of the Planned Parenthood clinics in Texas, and now poor women are dying in childbirth at alarming rates because they're not getting any prenatal care. People aren't getting screened for breast cancer, ovarian cancer. This is a serious problem. But, you know, this guy said he was going to make America great again. And the way that he seems to be doing that is by taking away the very thing that made America great. It was always my understanding that the standard of living is what made America great. That was what won the Cold War. I've talked to multiple Soviet citizens, people who grew up in the Soviet Union, who never believed that the United States had superior military power. They never believed that. So that was we were never the threat that we imagined that we are. What actually won the Cold War was color television, because American movies, American TV filters out through the rest of the world, and they were they were making in the Soviet Union they were making sacrifices for the betterment of mankind, you know, for the common good. But they were able to see that Americans lived better, and that's what won. That's what won them over. And so then we have Donald Trump coming in saying that the American dream is dead, folks. And it's appropriate that he said that because he's the one that killed it. Yeah. Yeah. Indeed. Um, so 
what I've been doing for the last 30 years is I've been touring around the world playing music and in that job um, I've managed I've also been really curious about how politics work around the world so I've been paying pretty close attention to that and just looking at the way people in different countries live and that is why I am interested in completely replacing the government that we have in Texas and most of the government that we have in the U.S. because I don't think it's unattainable that we could live a lot better. I think that with a combination, I've, I've been to Canada, I've been all over Europe, I've been to Japan, Russia a few times, I've been to a lot of Eastern Europe, and just and I've been to Israel, just seeing how people live. And yeah, America is great, but with some changes, it could be really great. Do you get the impression that America is the best damn country in the world until you get over to some place else? Yeah, yeah indeed. I, I've been, I was in Australia and I see how much more efficient they are. I was in Europe and see how much more efficient they are. And the only time I saw American cars was in Dubai. The only time I saw the gas guzzling vehicles that we, that we sell to our own people is probably was an oil state. Yeah. You know, everywhere else. They are so much more efficient than us. They're so much more conscious than us. And it's disturbing to see how myopic and ethnocentric and insular yeah. we as a nation tend to be. Yeah. Globalization isn't something we're just going to undo. It's happening. We're buying and selling things overseas. People are traveling to and from overseas a lot more these days. Let's learn what we can from other countries. Give them what we do best. You know, like you said, color television, entertainment, you know, we still have, we still make great music here. We still do a lot of innovating here. Um, yeah, we used to be the innovators, we used to be the producers. And then it was sold that Americans needed to be the consumers, which meant that other people were the producers. Yeah. And this this leaves obviously leaves us at a disadvantage. This is the way I see it. Yeah. What what inspired you to run for governor, and what is your intent to in, in that run? Um, my intent in a run for governor, first of all is to restore our public school system, which has been strangled under the current administration. Um, I want us to fix our foster care system. Some of that means that it should be better managed, and um, some of it is going to take money. So. Well, a Republican politician would say, we can't just throw money at this problem. That's true. We can't just throw money at it, but we can... We can do that with the military. Why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can, we can fund it better and manage it a lot better. I mean, those are two broken things that the Texas pledge has refused to fix. Let's fix them. It's not that hard. We deserve really good schools in Texas. I went to public school. Wasn't that great? But it, it's not the teacher's fault, and it's not the kid's fault that it wasn't that great. Yeah, we, we're all about education on my channel. We, I have, I've been to the, the, the Texas State Capitol with my, you know, my wife and I holding picket signs to protest what they've been doing to sabotage the, the Texas education system since, I don't know, at least 2009. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm from a family of teachers. These are hard-working people. Don't blame the teachers. Don't even pile the blame on those hard-working people. Um, so when you when you run as as uh, when you're running for governor, I don't know if it's the same as as running for for Texas State Senate. It's it's absurd the way that our system works. The amount of money that's involved, the way that you have to petition for you, uh, just the way, to say nothing of the way that you have to advertise and all of the other you know, rigmarole and, and things that you have to do. 
it's just disturbing to me the, the loops or the uh, the hoops rather that you have to jump through in this. Yeah. And all the reporting and all the donations that are necessary. And then look at the the opposition. You just get tens of thousands of dollars funneled in from churches that don't have to report anything. How do you work with that? I mean, yeah. I, I have to be accountable for everybody that donates money to my campaign. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, at this point, because I just decided to run about a month ago, and part of that time I was on tour, because uh, I'm still a musician, I'm still a working musician, I haven't really figured out how I'm going to address the problem of being drastically outspent by Greg Abbott and his evangelical billionaire pals. Yeah. But... There are people who are better at money than me who are sick of this problem as well. Yeah. Uh, if you you haven't mentioned your your slogan, by the way, which I love. I love the slogan. My slogan is, "Hi, my name is Thor Harris. I'm running for Texas governor because fuck this." And the reason fuck this is there's a lot of attention being paid on the federal government because. Donald Trump, well, I'll say no more, right? Yeah. But the Texas government is every bit as hateful and destructive to its own people and, and has perhaps even more contempt for most of its own people than the federal government. Um, the state government is, is pretty bad. We are pretty insidious. We've been historically bad to our citizens. Well, like he was talking about before, with, with uh, the, the infant mortality rate being equivalent to a third world country. Yeah. With them cutting in 2011, when they cut the, the education budget by half. Yeah. What? Why cut the education budget by half in 2011 when the state was pretty flush with cash? Well, I'll tell you exactly why. Because the Republican Party doesn't want an educated constituency. Right. Because those people will vote responsibly. Yeah. They, you know, they, they don't... They, for whatever reason, they're completely okay with everybody, and I mean everybody, having guns everywhere they go. Mm -hmm. Because, And I think the reason that this is is because it gives everybody a false sense of security. If they don't really understand the system, but they think that they've got a sidearm that they can shoot every now and again, maybe somehow they'll be a little more secure. But what they need to do is understand what's, the, what's, what's being wielded against them, the laws that are being passed, and, and the way that the structure is set up. Because if they've created a positive feedback loop, which has negative results, they uh, have advocated for the longest time abstinence only sex education, which of course that means. That doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. Okay, Aran just mentioned our abstinence only sex education. Um, Techniques down here that has led to the highest teen pregnancy rate in the country, and right here in Texas, and the highest rate of repeat teen pregnancy. Yeah, so lots of babies. And then what they do is that they cut all the benefit programs. Once you have all these pregnant teenagers, well, then suddenly you, you cancel all the programs for for. Uh, uh, women and infant children, which was something that would have normally funded for uh, uh, unwed or unemployed teen mothers with their baby. So they, what they want to do is they want to create a, a distinct division between the haves and the have-nots, where they grant tax breaks for the very rich and take away any benefit program for the poor people, and including education, so that they don't, and and also contraception, so that you have people that are locked into this perpetual poverty situation. The thing that made America great was the fact that we had a middle class. We had a middle class, yeah. Post war. So I'm talking about my campaign. Yeah, that's going to let you do yours. Oh no, no, that's good. I, we have a, me and Iran have a lot in in common. Um, and, and it's and it's um it's pretty simple what needs to happen for Texas and for the US. Um, we need better education, we need to protect the environment. Speaking of which, 
The federal government is dismantling the EPA. We have in Texas a sort of mock agency called the TECQ, Texas Environmental. TCEQ, Texas Commission on Environmental Quality. Um, that that office is right there on I-35. It is staffed with a bunch of Rick Perry and Greg Abbott appointees. And what they do is hand out permits to industry tycoons to pollute our beautiful state. Down where I grew up, well, I grew up in Laporte, but there's a town called Pasadena, and that's sort of the beginning, well, it's actually south of that, down in Texas City, where the petrochemical um, processing stuff begins, and then it goes up through Texas City, and then, as you know, all the way across Louisiana. Well, those people have... Uh, brought billions and billions of dollars, yes, into the Texas economy for decades. And that will continue, but they could be a little more careful with our environment and still make billions and billions of dollars. Also, another thing to think about, we are moving away from a petroleum economy. We're going to have a huge amount of coastline that is a super fun site. What are we going to do with that land as the petroleum industry is finished with it? We can help renewable energy companies move in there and maybe keep that land productive because it's not going to be for growing food and we're not going to build housing for poor people on top of that toxic land because that would be wrong <laughs> because that would be wrong <laughs> um, so looking into the future this year we've had I don't eat, I can't even count anymore how many category 4 category 5 storms pillaging the coast of Texas Meanwhile, we have climate deniers in our government. This is real, folks. I've been here since 1965, and I can tell you, it's it's hotter for longer now than it used to be. Well, you know, the problem is, and I think this is obvious on pretty much everyone, is that the, Texas is beholden to the oil industry. We we are owned and controlled by fossil fuels, so you cannot say anything against the fossil fuel industry. It's just like when I was a little boy, they would uh, they would advertise cigarettes the same way. They, they hired the cigarette companies, all the tobacco companies hired their scientific experts to argue that there was no detriment to smoking. And they held this off for years and years. I'm seeing exactly the same pattern yeah. behavior right now. And another example of that, that's, I'm glad that you brought that up. Do you know when the European countries took lead out of paint? <laughs> 1930. Do you know when we took lead out of paint? 1978. This is wrong, you guys. We have to stop this. We cannot let industry line the pockets of our politicians and poison us. I know this stuff is tedious and a little bit boring, but if you if you can just help us overthrow <laughs> the government that we have right now, I know it's asking a lot because you guys are busy. But <laughs> if you're not too busy, can you help us overthrow the government? <laughs> <laughs> because we deserve better, Texas. We deserve better, America. And a lot of it does have to do with money, with money in politics. All right, I'm going to ask you one, uh, one, one last question. Uh, because of, we, 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 tr we struggle. Uh, we're, on, we're on Deep Ellum in Dallas. Yeah. 
uh, and everywhere we wanted to sit down and talk, there's just an incredible amount of noise because it's Deep Ellum in Dallas. Yeah. So uh, I would like to do if you once you get your campaign underway, um, I'd like to do another like a, like a, a Google Hangout. Yeah. So you, you ever do those? Yeah. Okay. So you know, give me give me your campaign uh, pitch as, as best you want, okay. so that we can kind of overcome all of the the background noise here. But I wanted to. I'm, I'm very glad to have met you. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you know, somebody is running. Um, it's surprising to me that after this after this last election, so many people have woke up to the idea that you know, they used to say, "Don't vote," right? Well, no, 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 now they know what not voting gets you, right? Yeah. And suddenly we've had a whole slew of new people running for office. I've had the pl yeah. pleasure of interviewing several of them, and I'd like to interview. There's another guy running for. Are you aware that you have a, an opponent for the Democratic ticket for governor? Is he a gay club owner in Dallas? Who was? Uh, I love that guy. Who was recently uh, uh, crowned Mr. Leather International, Mr. Leather. <laughs> I like you, Mr. Leather. And uh, <laughs> if you want to do it, I'll help. Yeah. Um, somebody different. You know, it doesn't have to be me, you guys. But Greg Abbott is not looking out for us. That's He's right. had time, and he is not looking out for us, and it's a serious problem. It's, it's, like, the, it's like the shirt says, fire the GOP because they're not working for you. They're not. They're working for their huge donors. I mean, yeah, it, I know paying attention. And another thing is, it's, it's, it's important where we get our news from. I'm not going to tell anybody what news source to listen to, but listen to a few different ones. You know what I had to do this morning? This morning, I was in a, a high school classroom where the students were all asking me questions about how do you verify your sources, right? And so I had to give I had to give sort of mini lectures on uh, that there are certain biases in, in different news media outlets, and you have to be aware of which news media had, is, is already attributed with or accused of of having this bias or that bias, and then you have to actually source the alternate perspective, and that you have to be aware of algorithms that are already written into our social media, so that you get a, get, well, get a positive feedback loop, so you'll never even know. What, what, you know, if you're left wing, you'll never even know what the right wing is thinking, yeah. what their data is, because the system is is rigged to keep feeding you what you already want to hear. So you have to force yourself to look in yeah. the other perspective. And I've, I've testified before the Board of Education, they weren't even aware that bias was a negative aspect. They, they thought you could be openly biased, and that's fine. And we had to explain that bias is in the same category as logical fallacies, which, I, again, they, they didn't understand that either, <laughs> about why you can't put this in your textbooks. You know, they don't, nobody seems to understand what it means to be objective or accurate or even-handed. Yeah. We're going to have to close it up. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to, to make, your, make your last statement. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll set it down. Um, okay. Texas, please, please uh, get out and vote in 2018. I know midterms are kind of like not the big one, but they are really important this time. We need a firewall in Texas against Donald Trump and his hurtful policies. SB4 has was an attempt to assist Donald Trump with his ICE raids down here in Texas. We need to protect our neighbors yeah. against... And a lot of people think it's just the, the, the president and he gets to do what he wants. No. You need a battery of the lower, the lower, the down ballot. Yeah. Right? Because those are the people who end up enabling yeah. the psychopath in the top office. Yeah. Right now, right now Greg Abbott is a lapdog to Donald Trump. Whereas, I would like to be a rabid pit bull that Donald Trump never wants to get near. And if I'm governor, Donald Trump won't be making many trips down to Texas. Um, we need to protect our environment. We need better funding for our schools. We need to stop attacks on Planned Parenthood because they help. Okay, 10 seconds left. Close up. Okay. Uh, vote in 2018.
Texas. Thor Harris, Governor of Texas. Thank you very much. Thank you.